Hey, welcome aboard, everybody. Here we are. Let there be talk on a Monday, September 9th. Fantastic guest today. One of my favorite things about doing the show over the last seven and a half, almost eight years, is uh, constantly featuring new great bands and turning people on to new music. It's, uh, it's nothing better than finding a new band or a new song and you're just like, oh, I love this. And you play it over and over and over a thousand times. That's exactly what happened to me with my uh, guest today. The band is Tropical Fuckstorm from Australia. And yes, that is their real name, which is, uh, which is hilarious because, like I say on the show, when I first heard the name, I thought, oh, it's got to be some kind of joke band. And then I put it on, and it's just next level. Uh, this band, I, I cannot stop listening to their new record. It is absolutely incredible. And, and also their last record. They have two records that I spin nonstop. The new one is called Brain Drops. And the first record is A Laughing Death in Meat Space. And uh, the, both these records, amazing. And I'm going to play one of the songs... Uh, which is on, um, I'm going to play the title track, actually, after this intro, just to give you a little taste of this band. The, the track will be called Brain Drop, so that way you'll be like, what was that song? It's the title track of the new record. They're out on tour right now, and I saw them a few weeks ago, and they fucking blew my mind. Complete rock show. Absolutely absolutely happy i got to see him and also always bummed when i have i have the band on before i see him live because then so much more to talk about but uh we had a great conversation anyway because it was just an honor to have them on they had just landed from australia obviously probably a little uh, jet lagged but came straight over to the hut sat down on the mics and we got into a great conversation Make sure you check this band out. Uh, they're all over the uh, East Coast, I believe, this week. Something like that. But go to their uh, Instagram, tropical underscore fuck underscore, uh, underscore storm. Blah. Man, just waking up. I was in Vegas all weekend. Oh, my God, what a weekend. It's so funny how uh, all these years I'm not a Vegas guy, but now I'm finding all these great things to do in Vegas other than the uh, cliche standard stuff of gamble, drink, and go clubbing, all that stuff. Man, I'll tell you what I did. Uh, I went, I probably did one of the coolest things I've ever done. I went to a place called Dream Racing, and I want to right now, Give big, big shout out to Steve Jones, who works there. Not Steve Jones from the Sex Pistols, but uh, Steve Jones and my instructor, Mike, which I didn't get his last name because I was just fucking completely on another planet just looking at these cars. But Dream Racing is outside of Vegas, about a 10 minute ride. And you go to this place. It's out by the it's at the NASCAR track. But in the middle, they have another track, and you can drive. I'm talking the best cars on the planet. You can drive supercars. You can drive uh, some of the most uh, high-end exotic cars like Lamborghini, Ferrari, uh, Aston Martin, Porsche. It, it, it was insane. They had over 70 cars to choose, and I could not fucking believe... First of all, I wanted to drive them all. But I learned real quick. Uh, I, I, I narrowed it down to a couple cars that I've always wanted to drive. One was a Ferrari 488, which is the brand new, um, brand new Ferrari that took over for the 458. 
and which is turbo, which I didn't know at the time because I love natural aspirated cars. So, but I did it anyway. So I drove the Ferrari first. This whole experience is mind boggling. You get there, they couldn't be cooler. It was so insane. Sat down with a bottle of water. They told me what was going to happen. Went into this room, uh, watched a video of the track. The guy showed me some uh, pointers on how to uh, hit the apex. And, and don't worry, they're not stick. They're all paddle shift out there, which at first I was bummed, but then I was uh, realized real quick, paddle shifting is the only way to go when you're racing on a track. It is so exhilarating. Um, anyway, uh, Mike showed me the apexes, and then, and then they did something that was really insane. They threw me in a Maserati SUV. I was in the passenger seat, and Mike and Steve were in the car, and they just said, we're going to give you a hot lap in the SUV just to give you the uh, idea of the track. And we got out there, and a hot lap is basically where you got like a pro driver driving as fucking radical as he can because he's so skilled. And, uh, and you're in the passenger seat and holy shit, I, I Instagrammed it, but you do not get the idea of how fast we are fucking going on this track. I'm looking at the Instagram video. I'm like, oh, this just looks like we're doing like 30, but no, man, we're doing 80, a hundred, 120, 125 miles an hour around these turns and, and straights up to 150. And, and you're in an SUV, which makes it feel even scarier. Like SUVs, you're like, we're just going to roll right here. Just, I'm like, what the fuck? So we do a hot lap. And then we get out and he goes, all right, it's your turn to drive. And I get in the Ferrari 488 which uh, living in LA for 20 years, I've seen a million Ferraris uh, on the streets every day. It's, it's almost like a Prius out here. It's hilarious. It's like, there's a Ferrari, there's a Lamborghini, there's a GT2, there's a GT3, there's a, a Bugatti, there's a, you know, it's over and over, super high-end exotic cars, just going down sunset, doing 10 miles an hour. But I've never got to drove a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Bugatti or a McLaren. I've never drove any of those. And I've always, always wanted to drive one. Since you're a kid, you got the posters on your wall. You're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell a million records. I'm going to buy a Ferrari. And then you don't sell a million records. And then you, all right, okay. Anyway, I got in the car. And it's so rad. They don't have any steering wheel. There's no fucking brakes. None of that shit. It's you and the coach. And he's just, he's just in your ear in a low, cool key, kind of like a Yoda. He's like, all right, go into the turn, throttle, more, more gas, more gas, hit the brake, hard on the brake, hard on the brake, straighten it out, full throttle, full throttle, hard brake, hard brake, off brake, no brake. No gas, no throttle. He's just right there, and you just... And, you, and I did five laps in the Ferrari, and I was losing my mind, like, wow, fucking drove a Ferrari. This is cool. And then we parked it, and if you've listened to the show over the years, you know I am an absolute Porsche freak, and we got into the GT2 RS. I believe there's only 500 made in the world. Came out this year. They're completely sold out. And I think they're around $400,000. And they are 700 horsepower. And let me tell you something. Everybody's like, what'd you like better? The Ferrari? What? When I got into this Porsche, it was like home. You get in this thing, you're like, wow. And... I cannot even tell you how radical it feels to be. The Ferrari is kind of luxurious. It's a, it's, a, it's a race car, but it's also, it also feels a little safe. I was hammering it, getting going for it, like, all right. And uh, it gives you a, uh, a, a feel of uh, safety. So I had that same kind of thing going into the GT2, 
thinking, okay, we got ABS, we've got traction control, and uh, I can just hit this shit at 150, 120. Oh, it'll be no problem. And I fucking flew down the first turn, hit the brakes, didn't uh, didn't transfer the weight quick enough, and the car immediately got away from me. And I was like, whoa. You got to fucking respect this car. And every driver at that track, all the pro guys are like, oh, the, the Porsches. You got to be a driver to understand these cars. And that made me love it even more. Because if you could kick ass in a Porsche, people know you are a driver. Anyway, I could go on and on about that. And I probably will talk more about it on my uh, Patreon episode on Wednesday. Patreon.com slash Dean Del Rey. I'll be talking about Elton John. I saw Elton John over the weekend. Bill Burr and I. I was in Vegas performing with Bill. Had one of the greatest weekends I've had in a long, long time. Uh, You know, uh, got my mind off my fucking... uh, herniated disc slowly rehabbing that with my neck machine and my cbd lion i'm all over the cbd uh, lotions on my neck and i'm telling you this shit is working absolutely that be between that and the oils under my tongue the tinctrix i've been uh, loving the cbd lion gluten-free vegan Organic, non-GMO, third-party tested, zero THC, uh, manufactured in the U.S., not in somebody's garage, not some weird chemist. CBD Lion, this shit is really helping me. And they also got some for pets. I keep forgetting to mention that. You got a little squirrely pet, give him a couple blasts of this. There's no THC in it, so don't worry about that. You're not going to get all high. But it really, really has been helping me. And I'm telling you, uh, you can look at the CBD Lion chart. They've got different colors for different uh, health benefits. Like uh, check out the blueberry for pain and calmness or insomnia or inflammation. That's the one I'm on right now. I'm trying to keep the inflammation down on my uh, herniated disc. Or maybe you've got uh, a little uh, full focus problem you know little add get down on some uh jack hair all the cbd lion stuff is incredible cbdlion.com use the code dean d-e-a-n for 20 percent off everything all the time this code does not burn up cbdlion.com the code is dean d-e-a-n get some gummies that's an easy way to do some cbd or uh shatter or any kind of vape pens and cartridges. They've got it all. I prefer the lotion for my neck. If you've got some uh, soreness, uh, I put it on my wrists and everything. I love it. CBDLion.com. Kicking ass. Okay. Before we go, quick shout out on the new tour dates coming up. Please come to the shows. Uh, I'm going to be at Cleveland Hilarity September 20th and 21st. Headline them. First time in Cleveland, so let's fill the room and uh, come hang. Talk rock and roll, watch comedy, laugh your ass off, and uh, enjoy it. Cleveland Hilarity September 20th, 21st. I will be uh, Nashville October 5th. I'm doing the High Watt Rock Club. Also, some great dates with Joey Diaz. Going to be in Chicago at the Chicago Theater. Going to be doing Detroit, the Motor City Casino. We're doing Omaha, Sacramento, and San Francisco. All those Joey Diaz dates are also on DeanDelRay.com. Quick shout out to the Patreoners, and then we'll get into the episode. Dan Marganiski. Marganiski, what's up? Matthew Malachi Schwartz. James DeWeaver, the return of my man James DeWeaver, Lorenzo Jorge Portolo, Kevin Turchin, Nora Swish. Hey, Nora Swish. <laughs> I love all you guys. Don't forget, bonus episode will be out this week, and next week is Dave Lombardo. Right now, though, let's get into it with this incredible band. Check out their song right here, Brain Drops. Here they are, Tropical Fuckstorm. Hey, Ross, 
the shine you find then even if you're feeling kinda wonky on your legs if you're wondering who woke up you woke all right up, here we, we are another episode of uh, let the be talk this yeah. is a, a great day uh, a lot of people i always love when they say hey you got any band recommendations and i and i say tropical fuckstorm they're like they look at me like i'm <laughs> yeah all right like they think i'm telling them to fuck off <laughs> in some kind of way you know but uh that's uh, that well that's who i have on the show today but when I was first emailed the band, somebody said, check this band out. I think you'll like it. I thought immediately like, oh, this is a joke. Because I looked at the, you know, the Laughing Death and Meat Space, Tropical Fuckstorms, the band. I was like, what is this? And then I thought maybe it's like a Mr. Bungle kind of thing, some kind of wacky shit. Then I put it on and I was like, wow, it, it is amazing. How are you guys? Yeah, good, good, good. It is a bit bungle e Bungle-esque. Yeah, it's, it's, well, introduce yourselves. I'm, I'm Gaz. I'm, I'm, I'm the singer and guitar noodler. This is... <laughs> uh, I'm Erica, and I'm a Scorpio. <laughs> You're Scorpio? Yeah. Whoa. Two Scorpios in the band, actually. Really? They, two Scorpios, two Cancers. Oh, good thing you don't have an Aquarius in the band. Ooh. Scorpios would not... <laughs> we're getting all... We're getting all uh, uh, I get into that shit, though. That shit's mm-hmm. real. <laughs> I'm Fiona. Fiona. And I'm Hamill. All right, God, it's it's uh, it's an honor to have you guys on because I uh, absolutely love this band, and I immediately was like, I have to have them on the podcast, and I was trying to search it out, and I don't know a lot of people that know your band, and I feel like that is a crime, and we've got to get the word out there. So I dove into it. I started tweeting about it, and people were telling me about your other band and, and stuff like that. Australia based course where my favorite band comes from acdc yeah cool yeah (laughs) but but what i love about your band is i love acdc but then i love your band which really shows the um you know the the musical palette of me i think of like wow if somebody heard this they'd go you like this band absolutely you know it's so out there yeah yeah we're pretty weird we're not as straight as acdc but then acdc probably the greatest band of all time (laughs) yeah yeah i mean let's talk about how you guys uh started uh you know because this isn't like a a band that you go like we're just gonna write some songs try to get a record deal and get on the radio this is some way out there stuff uh that was kind of what we were doing (laughs) yeah (laughs) but um we had me and fiona had a band for years the drones the drones and um uh, I guess, you know, we just did that for ages and sort of kind of got sick of it um, and just wanted to do something different for once. So we sort of put that to bed. And then, you know, we know Erica. She's toured with the drones, sang with the drones and toured with her, her bands. Um, yeah, we knew her. And then we saw Hammer at um, at a gig playing for her band High Tension. And I sort of put her in my um, sort of drummer bank because every now and again you need a new drummer. You know, it's like Spinal Tap. Yeah. So, um, I... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so, I sort of thought, wow, if I ever need a drummer, you know, there she is. And, um, yeah, about a year later, you know, I didn't know her. And then we, we just met through a mutual friend. I, I, I sort of got introduced. Me and Fee went out, got drunk. Went on a date. Went on a little date. It was good. <laughs> yeah. And now here we are. I don't know. We sort of, we just... Did it real quick. We we, we kind of had to desperately put together a set and then went on tour with King Gizzard for a bit. And um, what a great band! Yeah, Whoa. A really cool band. They got yeah. a new record out that's smoking. Yeah, like all that sort of Slayer type styles. Yeah, stuff. right. Yeah, 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 yeah. It cool. was really bizarre. They dropped that and I was like, "Oh, this is amazing!" Yeah, you know, just yeah. metal riffs and. Well, uh, they they came up to our house and they made a record and uh, we got a studio at our house. Um, they made a record in like three days and then. About, I don't know, two weeks later, that metal record, the next record came out. It was like, they just make records so fast, it's ridiculous. And they made it at your studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you... F- Fishing for Fishies, the one prior yeah, to Yeah, did the, you produce that or engineer or anything? Kind of, I mean, I engineered it. It's hard to produce them because they just do everything so quick. I just mic'd them up and then, I don't know, two days later, we were done. You know? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're fast. Now, do you do your own records 
Yeah, yeah, we get help. We get. Uh, we had a guy, Mike De- Delons, who plays guitar in in Hammer's other band, High Tension. He did the last record. He just sort of helped. I don't know. We're kind of unmanageable and unproducible because we're kind of. I don't know. It's. I don't know. We're overqualified. So. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean. Yeah. I don't know really uh, what a producer would do with your type of sound as, as far as more of uh, you just need great engineers and just capture what you're doing because it's so, it's so out there. Like, you know, I mean, the first track on, on the new record, Paradise, that thing's like eight minutes long, <laughs> you know, and just this insane saga type of so- uh, song. It is saga. Uh, yeah, it, it really is. So if you think about it, a producer would be there like, uh, we might want to cut this down a little bit. I mean, what's we he going <laughs> to... We, we, it's good in our home studio as well because I think we just, near Gaz and Fee's house, there's a river, and he goes swimming, he drinks some beers, and you come and do some takes or whatever. And we sort of encourage each other more to the other extreme. Like we had a whiteboard and we were like trying to work out the sequence of the parts of the songs. And we're like, this is a crazy bit, and this bit we call soft, and this bit and was like very much um, <laughs> a strange experiment. It's, it's, I mean, I, I love this band. And, and, and what's really <laughs> incredible is if you listen to, like, you know, You Let, you let the Tires Down, uh, that's the first song I heard. And I was like, wow, this fucking, it was almost like, uh, like a play is going on with the lyrics. Like you're telling this story in a kind of a, a, a one-man show kind of style with this weird music going on behind it. And, <laughs> and, and, but, but it's instantly your sound because if you listen to Paradise, you go, oh, well, this, this is the same band. Uh, you know, you have a sound, which is amazing, out of, you know, one, one, two records out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, people say, oh, that's good that you do that but it's just we have like a narrow bandwidth because my voice is probably less than an octave i'm a singer in inverted commas you know what i mean like so yeah no matter what we do we sound like us um i don't know if that's good (laughs) well the guitars really have a signature sound too man those guitars the way they're weaving in and out with like ding 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 the other one's playing something totally different (laughs) And, and then there's this, it's just, I, I just love it, man. It's definitely psychedelic, and it has a full art rock vibe to it. What was some of the uh, ideas when you're putting it together? Like, let's, some of the influences and stuff like that. What are our influences? Faye, Faye, what are our influences? <laughs> None? I'm interviewing you now. Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off. No, no influences? There's a lot of us. What were you listening to at the time? What was the... Beefheart? Was that the... That Beefheart? We, I remember pulling in the Suburban Lawns and Vivian Goldman and being like, I oh, like this stuff as well. And we were just... What else at the, at the time? We'd already had the first album and we'd been playing... It was more like... For the first album, we were new and learning how each other played and then we just went and played shitloads. So the second album seemed like a bit more cohesive, like we were already on each other's wavelength. Yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, we were kind of already, our styles were already there. I mean, you're into Dead Moon and stuff like that. Yes. Um, and me and Faye come from more of like a scientist, you know, scientists. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, yeah, stuff like that. So, and they're quite similar in their sort of trashy weirdness. Yeah, I don't know. It was just, we kind of knew what each other did before we all got together and started jamming anyway so it's suited by the time we plugged in what i love about it is right away it's a you're doing this because obviously you love to do it it's not like oh here's a record that's gonna set fire on the radio so it makes it really tough to go out and tour without great word of mouth and podcasting and all that stuff because this is the kind of music that definitely people grab onto I could see it, you know, like you ever hear a guy go, hey, check this band out from the 70s. And you go, how have I never heard this? It's right in my wheelhouse. Yeah, yeah. I feel like your band is like that. If somebody heard it later on, like I've never even heard this. So it's got to be known, you know? Yeah, we're used to that. I mean, from from the name onwards, it's like you were explaining. It's not like (laughs) it's not like a crowd pleaser from the 
Gustav. What's yes. up with the name, actually? Because, I mean, I already know when I post this podcast, they're going to put the umlaut stars or whatever over yeah. the fuck, you know? Like, but what, how did that come about? I know this is the most cliche question. Yeah. I usually never ask that. I thought it was a joke. But, I mean, um, we had this incredible... I was overseas at the time. We were making the initial band chats, and we had this incredible long thread of the dumbest fucking band names... And I was in there, just one of them. And then I was like, oh, no, it's the, the real one. Well, we'll <laughs> that's, the, yeah. that's the one we're going with. Uh, stupid fucking name. We had we, other options were... Um, uh, Leonardo Decapitated. Leonardo Decapitated, yeah. That's pretty cool. My, fav- my favourite, which we actually played under these names when we um, did our first shows in Melbourne. We just wanted to... So we played under all these different names about four or five shows just to get going. Um, middle-aged in the Middle East in the Middle Ages. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one too. Who's coming up with these whack uh, names? Uh, compliments to the chef. That's a great one. Compliments to the chef. Yeah. We, period drama. Period yeah. drama. Period. period drama. We played a show the other night just to practice um, some of the new songs off the album before we came under here. Uh, under period drama. Oh, as a secret name. Yeah. Kind yeah. of Blue Oyster Cult style, soft white underbelly. Remember yeah. that? <laughs> period drama. Because you didn't want the millions to show up. No. We were embarrassed because we didn't know our songs yet. Yeah. No, we, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> How do you guys, you like, I mean, do you uh, improvise? I'm a big deadhead guy. Do you improvise? Because uh, this music is screaming. Like we do, yeah. In like, we have like little sections in live in our live set that, yeah, anything goes kind of thing. But then some of the stuff it's quite hard to improvise over. Um, it's kind of set, and some of the beats are so odd that yeah. But um, yeah, we're still pretty loose. I'm. I like to think with it sort of. You know, we use a lot of drum machines and shit on 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 the recordings. Yeah, you use them live too. Uh no, nah, not Loops really. No, nah, because what we do is we kind of we sort of humanize them with with the loosest electronic band on the planet we kind of we do to you know uh we do to electronic sort of drum machine beats what hendrix did to rock and roll we just make it really sloppy yeah you know what i mean just crazy yeah really crazy so yeah well remember i just remember being in in high school first hearing the Jimi hendrix experience and going fuck that's loose and then thinking maybe for a second that might be a bad thing but then going hang on that's actually cool it's better than this sort of really I don't know, only tight thing. Yeah, top, 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 martial music. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We just sort of get up there and, and whatever happens, happens. When you made the first record, was it, uh, I don't know who your record deal is through, but did you, did people like get it right away? Were you shopping it around or were, were people like, I don't know about this? Or We shopped it in the States. We shopped it to how many fucking labels? I think we, like Cold Call, sent it to about 70 labels in the US and no one was even vaguely interested. That's crazy. And then we actually... So we go through Joyful Noise in the States, the label now, but um, we had um, this guy from this little record store called Village Green Records in Muncie, Indiana. Indiana. Really? And he was selling the imports for like fucking 70 bucks or something. And I wrote to him and said, oh, on Facebook or I don't know, whatever, Instagram. Oh, so sorry that um, you have to, you know, charge that much, but we don't have a label over here and blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, I'm... That's criminal. I'm going to send your record to my friend Carl, who has this label, Joyful Noise. And that's how we got our. our oh, that's deal. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah but no one else was Thanks interested. Really green. <laughs> Thanks, really green. But then, so it actually came out in the States like six months after it was released in Australia because no one wanted us. Yeah. What was the first, uh, because I missed you on the first tour, because I found out about you right after, but I think you played the Roxy or something. Where did you play? Echo. Echo, yeah. And I just missed it. I was like, fuck. (laughs) And then I thought, oh, they'll never come back. (laughs) You you never know. You know, bands, people don't understand. To come from Australia over here and tour, it's so much money. And you, you, look, it's the four of you. You don't have any roadies probably, right? It's just the four of you no, no way, no in way. a sprinter yeah. out playing. That is so much money. How many dates on this tour? 18. 
18. 18. Mm. And who are you out with? Are you headlining? Yeah, just us. Yeah, we're sort of picking up bands on the way. I, yeah, here, there, and everywhere, different band. Oh, that's so cool. And how many dates are you in on the tour now? One, this tonight. One. Oh, this we is the first yesterday. one. Yeah, oh, shit. When did you get in? Yesterday? Yeah. Oh, man. You got to be jet lagged now. We had, I had 12 hours sleep somehow. Now, what do you do when you're on the road? Are you uh, Airbnb and sleeping in the uh, Sprinter? How you say, um, what are you doing? All kinds. Yeah, we're Airbnb tonight, but just hotels and shit. Yeah, hotels. And what about gear? Is it just rental gear? Or did you, yeah, just rental gear. Yeah, yeah. God, it's crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, I, th- I know the, that band Stonefield, you know them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Good friends of mine. I've known them for like, I don't know, 10 years now. Wow. I met them 10 years ago when they were like yeah. brand new. Yeah, brand new, you know. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. Like I met the dad, and he's like, "My daughter is playing a band," and you know, you think it's gonna be like, "Oh, what's this?" You know. And I was like, "Wow, this is pretty cool." They're like Zappa heads and everything, yeah. but th- there they are, these four girls, sisters, and a tour manager, and they've been doing the same thing over and over and over, and that is fucking brutal. And they're starting to get somewhere. You know, they're out on some good tours right now in the States, but I've seen them. Yeah, play. they're out with Giz. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. which is a great tour. Yeah. But I've seen them play in New York to like four people in a basement and they keep their chins up and go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. That happens sometimes. What, what do you think the, um, the draw is going to be like on this run? Are people hearing about it? I think it's selling pretty good. It's, it's going to be all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fucking great. Oh, yeah, Amy from Ammo and the Sniffers. I was talking to her about a year ago. So now they're doing pretty good. Yeah, yep, yeah. Yeah, and she's hilarious. She goes, I go, how's things, man? How's touring? And she's like, oh, I'm exhausted. And I said, "Uh, yeah, is it going well? She's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's just taking forever because they they just want to be famous, which is good on them. (laughs) Yeah, Um, (laughs) it's uh, just taking forever. (laughs) It's like, it's taking forever. And I was like, how long have you been in the band? And she's like, oh, 18 months. Oh my God! And that's, well, that's what I said. I went, yeah. "What the fuck?" Like, yeah, you know, I've been doing this for fucking eighteen years, and she goes, "Oh my God, how are you not dead?" Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think a lot of people look at um, there's two types of uh, success. There's that long, long grueling yeah, one, and yeah, all yeah, of a sudden people sure. find it. Yeah. Or there's that fluky, weird shit where the band ignites up and down, and up and down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, yeah. one of the bands I love, Rival Sons. They're out there, you know, they're five albums deep right now. Yeah, yeah. They album every year, but they're starting to get there. Yeah. But hundreds and hundreds of shows and away from the families and home and everything. Some people are just, you know, the full timers. Some people do it, you know, while they're at uni and other people are congenital, just musical idiots and they can't help it. And that's us, you know, we're just going to play no matter what, you know. I, I love that. I mean, I'm I'm the same way. I'm a comedian at 53 years old. Yeah. People are like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah." I mean, where, what that's do you? That's funny. That's you work, funny. You Even work at funny. a bank. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What's worse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Now, let's get into uh, a little bit of how this record was recorded. Was it uh, recorded? Do you do it live, or you just lay down some drum machine stuff? How do you record these records? Both. We did. Yeah, we did more live stuff than we did on the first record because we played together a lot more, um, and we were in more of a rush. So, yeah, uh, it's hard to imagine that we had to rush more than we did on the first record. But yeah, a bit of both, a bit of everything. We'll, we'll try anything. You know what I mean? Like, just whatever works because we just trying to get some material and get out of the studio yeah put our guitars through ghetto blasters was cool yeah all those guitars on that album just you know the old cassette ghetto blasters yeah yeah from like the 80s yeah battery powered yep yeah we just yeah just use them put a mic in front of it wait you played the guitars through ghetto blasters yeah they sound good oh yeah it's like ooh. i used to do that actually the speakers would fry pretty quick (laughs) you know because you would hit like record i wouldn't put a tape in you could just you could kind of trick it and just hit record and play yeah and that's how you got the sound we've got these weird sort of 1990s things there's it's like a pretend Cassette? cassette player with a wire coming out of it and you plug that into your pedals and then you put, you know, the cassette into the cassette player and press. I think you have to press record yeah. and play, then pause, 
Mic it up, bang. And you just got to crank it until it nearly shits itself. Wow. It sounds good. It's really cool. The whole record was like that. That's yeah. how the record was done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. incredible. <laughs> now, what made you think to do that? Um, everything. If you don't do it, everything else has been done to death. Yeah. Guitars. Yeah. Hey, we got a Marshall and a Strat. Like how boring. How about, know, uh, well, Marshall, no, let's get a Fender sound here. We'll get a Tweed amp and a, yeah, and a, yeah. a Les Paul Special. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll use a big Fender amp as well but that is isn't really incorporated into the sound it's just there to make the guitar feedback you know what i mean like weird stuff from like hammer recorded some gamelan stuff from bali and you had some stuff from thailand and we met the the fucking venus sample other shit on it as a collection yeah thumb pianos through really crazy effects um yeah at the end of that song there's a song called the desert sands of venus and uh, right at the end you can hear like it's noise, it's wind noise, um, and it's actually recorded. It was recorded in about 1982 by a thing called a, a Venera lander. Uh, it's like Venera 14. It's this Soviet. You know the way you've got like the Mars landers and shit that put yep. around? Oh, yeah. Well, this is like uh, uh, one of these Venera landers comes down in a parachute. It's got a microphone on it. Uh, it lands and records the whole thing. You can hear like a lens cap popping oh, off. Yeah. On Venus. What, really? And you can hear the weather. On Venus. Yeah. Wow. And you can hear the weather and stuff. <laughs> what the fuck? And like the thing it's was, so sad. Yeah, it's so lonely. It's wow. the loneliest thing in the world. And it's like um, the, the air pressure is 90 times sort of Earth atmospheric pressure. It would be, it's like 500 degrees Celsius, which is something like 800 Fahrenheit. It's like a nitrogen slash uh, sulfuric acid atmosphere. It's, it's bad. Wow. But yeah, but they've just built the toughest microphone in the world. That's yeah. insane. And you can hear that right at the end of the song. The last 10, 15 seconds of the song is, is the surface of Venus. Yeah. I, I, I love both the records. It's crazy because it's, they're both like, it, it wasn't like, ah, uh, they went a different direction on this one. I was really afraid of that, you know, because I was so <laughs> in love with the sound. Uh, and, and I thought whenever I need kind of a, a weird band, I throw on that Tropical Fuckstorm first record and, and I was worried like, what if they just went like songs on the next one? You know, like, <laughs> like for, yeah, you know, like verse, chorus, bridge. And, and, and as soon as Paradise came on, I went, oh, oh, absolutely rocking here. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> we still think, I mean, that is a verse, chorus. I mean, well, it, it's just insane sanity on top of that yeah yeah that sounds like a pop song to us yeah, yeah. yeah i got verse <laughs> chorus single. second verse yeah. <laughs> single let's yeah. do it that's your single yeah the eight minute single yeah. yeah our record companies were like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> who did the album covers they're both beautiful joe becker yeah. and where does he live uh montreal i think oh toronto, uh, toronto. I think, <laughs> sorry i'm yawning and stretching uh, uh, yeah, he's cool. He's a uh, we just cold called him like we do with everybody. You just I cold called him? Yeah, we. I want to be friends. What <laughs> did, was he doing? Like, album covers or did he do art? And you saw it? He's an artist, and Gaz. So we were looking for something for a laughing death in meat space, and um, Gaz just saw that image, which is a painting of his called the King, and it's massive. It's like the size of that wall or something. Yeah. So it's a huge piece, and. We just said, can you use your that painting for our album cover? And then for Brain Drops, we actually commissioned him to do that piece and just gave him themes of the album. And he it's he so cool, us. man. I love it. It's it's like, I mean, it it it's definitely like something out of Juxtapose magazine. You he, know, he um he he did four seven inch covers for us as well. Oh yeah, and on one of them. Hold on, let me look at this. Uh, There's like 18 hard dicks. Really? And that was okay. We were like, cool, we can deal with that. And 18 then, um, hard dicks. <laughs> yeah, and, and, then, and, then, so, and then on another seven inch, there was probably five hard dicks. And then we said to him when we got this latest record cover done, we, we said, look, can we kind of just not have any hard cocks all over the thing? Or something? <laughs> like just no, no dick, please. No dick. And he was like, yeah, no worries, no worries. And it wasn't until the fucking record was printed and everything yeah. that we noticed he'd put a dick pic in there. Unbelievable. Like somewhere unsolicited dick pic. On the yeah. Laughing Death one? Uh, no, on, on the, the Brain new Drops. One. Oh, the so new you, one. if you, if you, you got to look really closely and you can see there's an iPhone 
with a dick pic on it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. This is like thanks. Like, he's, he's a funny dude because that's like we paid him, you know, a couple of grand. Like yeah. fuck, Canel. I he's love it. Good. He's yeah. like, he's like, yeah. We'll meet him for the first time real soon. It's going to be very funny when we go to Toronto next week or whenever the hell. Oh wow, going. you haven't met him. <laughs> he said, him. bring br- bring your drinking hats. He said. So oh he's, yeah, he's, and your weed cool. hats there. You know, it's I like reckon. a lot of legal weed there. You guys drug guys? We got that. We are now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> C- CBD line. I'm over here. I'm over here just hooking you guys up. Get on the. Actually, that's got no THC, which is which is cool. You know, that's more just like uh, I'm so into the natural healing right now because I, when I I hurt my neck right when I was in there, they go surgery. And I was like, wait a minute, I've been here five minutes. You're just throwing that out. You know, and then I talked to another do- a doctor, a surgeon, and I go, yeah, they said surgery. He goes, you know what surgeons like to do? Surgery. <laughs> and he's all, he's all, they're just bored, like, surgery. <laughs> like, they're just throwing that around, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but what, what are, do you guys, uh, are you guys, like, it's, of course, it's kind of art, rock, psychedelic and stuff. Are you mushroom people or any kind of stuff like that? Mushies, acid. We don't, I, I I can't smoke pot. You guys can't smoke pot. I get paranoid. I do, yeah. It's but it's it's the worst because it's it's the best thing for music. It's better than acid or mushrooms as far as listening to music. Nothing sounds, well, nothing makes makes music sound better than than smoking a. You know what? Uh, the guy from the CBD Lion guy told me was, uh, which I never knew this, but if you're tweaking on weed like paranoid, you take CBD without THC. And it brings you down right away, like it's because it it combats it to like because the THC and the CBD, the way they battle, you know, the THC takes over. Yeah. But if you pollute it with uh, CBD, which is amazing, it takes it away. I was uh, flying on mushrooms really hard in Amsterdam before. <laughs> And then they went away real quick. And I saw the guy the next day that sold them to me. He goes, hey, how about this? I go, they were great, but they fucking went away fast. And I was eating candy. And he goes, were you eating that shit on them? I go, yeah. And he goes, sugar reverses uh, your mushroom high. The effects, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, yeah, that. I yeah, never yeah. knew that. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, I've heard it. Yeah. yeah, so once I knew that, I would just carry a packet of sugar with me and I would never freak myself out because I was like, I got the parachute right in my pocket. <laughs> So I just get cooking on psychedelics and then yeah, be like, yeah. uh oh, a little too much, some sugar, bring it down. Some of those mushrooms from Amsterdam are killer. Like we've had them and I couldn't walk. I, I had a good time, yeah. but my nothing worked below the waist. Like I had to like crawl to the toilet and stuff like that. We just watched T V all night. It was cool. I was in I was in a shop in Amsterdam and they had a like a photo album. And you went through it, it had pictures, really nice pictures of mushrooms. And then underneath it told you what they did, each one. Yeah, yeah. And so there's these different ones, like these are from California, they're laughy and giggly. These are uh, more I- inner high. And then on the last page were these small orange ones. They're really small, they're from Hawaii. And it said, these, don't fuck around with these unless you are a, a skilled psychedelic taker. Wow. My buddy's like, I'm on those. So he took them, and, and we were at the Stones show, and this guy had to leave. He was like, oh. I looked at him, and it looked like he was saying, oh, fuck, but nothing was coming out of his mouth. Just, oh, and he left. And I was like, whoa, man. The next day he told me, he goes, those were fucking brutal. Have you done DMT? No. I did see people do it on Instagram. And you see them, they just go, oh. They, oh, I've done it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's only like like 10 seconds or something? No, it's 10 minutes. 10 but minutes. We did the thing where you take enough that it just knocks you on your ass. And um, so you stick it in a bong and you smoke it with some tobacco or whatever. And... um. I took it, I did it first, I had it at my first cone or bowl or whatever you call it over here. Um, it sort of, it was like extreme tripping. So I was like, whoa, and everything in the room was moving. But um, that wasn't enough. So my friend said, look, just have more. So I had, I had twice as much as I had previous. And then I heard an avalanche coming from behind me and just then sort of collapsed onto the couch. Whoa. And then I woke up in a forest, and it was all pixelated and kind of... What's, what are the, what's, it was all fractal. It's oh, like wow. a fractal forest. Well, this is on the trip, huh? Yeah. And I'm, it's, it's, not like, um, it's not like a dream where it seems semi-real, you know, when you're dreaming or something. This was just real. 
it was just like what the fuck i woke up in a different universe and then i looked to the side and then there was this huge fucking bird standing there looking at me and it was real and it was that thing like if you're walking through the woods and you come across an animal you know you say you're about to take a piss or something then you you meet eyes with another living thing yeah and there's that kind of there's there's a very conscious communication there kind of thing in a you know an acknowledgement of another living being this was this bird did that to me just kind of stared through me and i just immediately i i had, I had never felt more regret at that moment i just went i wish i hadn't have taken this fucking drug whoa really but then, but then i thought <laughs> well but then i thought well now I'm, I'm here i might as well try and deal with it and it took about a minute and then I was okay with it. I was like, cool. There was nothing to say. It was, there was a communion going on anyway. And then I kind of just walked around. And it's really hard to remember a lot of it because the things happened that was so fucking weird that your mind is not designed to, uh, to store that as a memory. And it's just all it is. It's like if, if you imagine just detaching your brain from your body, from any external stimuli like touch, smell, sight, you know, hearing... Um, gravity, the sense of gravity. If you could just take your brain, put it in a jar, and launch it into space, it, that's what it feels like. That's and insane. It's exhausting. <laughs> to think about, like, just to think about that you, uh, some kind of drug completely can change your mind. It blew my mind. Like, I mean, beyond You're acid and mushrooms. I was on the couch, yeah. And at, at one, that's right, when I shat my pants, I didn't shat my pants for real, but when I was like, fuck this i regret this i kind of did that thing like you do when you're having a nightmare i sort of wrenched my eyes open you know with it took all of my will to do it i went ah and then looked around the room and i was still in the same room and the everything was moving but at least i felt okay there's a way out if i need to get out then i shut my eyes again and instantly was back in that forest i had another friend who did it jared from lost animal on that and he said he um all these aliens came and he, uh, he said to them, what is the secret of the universe? And then they took him into this deep sort of black hole. And it's all fractals. And everyone gets to the fractals. Yeah. And he says he went deep into this black hole. And at the bottom of this kind of weird chasm, there was a hard drive. And they all pointed oh. at the hard drive. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then, <laughs> oh my but then the, God. Next, the next day, we fucking we Googled it. Like, what happens? And that avalanche thing coming from behind you, the instant regret. All that stuff, the fractal nature of it, and then the communion with some other living being. Everybody has that same trip. Yeah. Wow. And we had it after a friend's funeral. And you think, if I said to you, if we went to a friend's funeral and I said, let's take some acid, you'd like, you say, get fucked. I'm not doing that. That's the worst possible thing we could ever do right now. Yeah, at a funeral, because all the worst things all are the going on and stuff. Mind. But the thing is, with DMT, it doesn't matter. You could do it in combat. You could do it. You could, you could do it anywhere at any time. You could feel as worse as you've ever felt is good it doesn't matter it it it's so overwhelming it, it, you ever think you think about like writing a song on it like if you only got about 10 minutes so you did and this st start working too quick i reckon you could go you before you go in you could think okay i'm gonna look for song ideas and then like to play an instrument we would wrote, be weird on it we wrote um we got asked to do this uh, like reimagine or actually make because it doesn't exist the soundtrack to the movie no country for old men oh yeah that's then, that, yeah that's right because there's just, no music on it yeah which is a masterpiece film by the way and i mean you know it doesn't have a soundtrack for a reason but yeah then, Someone asked us to make one, so then we, I think we spent the first night and we were like, oh my God, this is really hard. And then the second night we took acid and Ooh. then we had a really, it was really great and it was really awesome. And then um, we, we heard all these, it was really good. And then it took until about <laughs> three o'clock in the morning and then we kind of like, well, okay, we'll hang up our hats and have some dinner. And we made some we made some amazing spaghetti and then we lost our minds <laughs> so it was like Whoa. just timed it enough so we did heaps of productive work and then we started putting forkfuls of spaghetti in our mouth and i just look over at gaz and he's crying with laughter <laughs> and I was like, we, we just got in in time because were, were you guys best. doing a score for it <laughs> yeah yeah so did you throw it up on a screen a live oh, yeah, score yeah. like a big big art century melbourne yeah yeah, yeah. oh shit did it uh was it all instrumental yeah. Oh, we did. Oh. We did that tiny. Me and you did that tiny bit of screeching at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Which round? Which we actually turned some of the 
some of the sort of things we did for the live score turned into songs for this album. No like shit. Maria, Maria. sixty three. Wow. That was the last song was like the screaming at the end. We A little did bit for of the that. Live. That's when um Anton Chigurh's um like injecting himself in the bath. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Blowing the pharmacy up. What a film, man. Yeah. What a film. Like, and, Great and, film. And we uh, watched it 20 times because we had to. Oh, yeah. More yeah. Than 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're, you're just doing the, the, the music for it, and that's a, a long film. There's yeah. no, I often say there's no scarier um, monster, uh, like a villain, than him do? with no mask. You know, you got Jason, you got yeah. Freddy Krueger, yeah. all those kind of types. But this it's, it's his hairstyle. That's what scares you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's his mask. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. And also just his, uh, I mean, that coin, that coin flipping scene. <laughs> There's no greater coin flipping scene. <laughs> I, I, I mean, what you see that and you just go, this fucking movie. Some guy in Australia uh, put new sound over the top of that particular scene. He dubbed that thing and uh, it's called More Bickies. And More Bick- Bickies. More Bickies for old men. And Bickies are... Um, pingers. Pingers. What do you call them here? Ecstasy. Ecstasy, MDMA. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, we'll, we'll send it to you. It's really good. Is it on YouTube? It's really yeah, it's on our Instagram too. It's really oh, good. Oh, I got yeah, to see, see that right away. <laughs> that, that film's a cult classic. Have you seen uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood yet? No, we want to see it... Oh. Oh, oh, it's yeah, playing around the, the corner. It's yeah, playing around it's the corner. Right there, yeah. yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but you're gigging tonight, right? And then you yeah. leave tomorrow? So we can't see it. I mean, that's the reality. But you'll see it on tour. <laughs> yeah. Go see it immediately. Oh, I, I, I think it's uh, a smasher. Mm. I think it's incredible. And uh, I think you guys will love it too. The music in it's great. Wow, cool. Yeah, the soundtrack's great. You Now, let's talk a little bit about... Uh, what you're going to do this tour and then are you going to Europe or anything or what's going on? We're going home and we're touring at home. We're doing an Australian tour for the album and then Europe. And then Europe, yeah. So US, September, Australia. October. October, <laughs> UK, Europe, November. What, what's the response been on the new record? I'm so far so good. Everybody digs it. Yeah, yeah. we kind of, we were, it's hard to tell you put out a record you know, if if a record is your body, you know, while you're making it, it's you've literally had your head up your own ass for a yeah. while, so it's hard to tell. Yep. If it's good or not when you finish, you kind of just finish it and abandon it and see what happens. And then, but the response has been all right, so that's good. You know, it's pretty fucking weird. So yeah, it's yeah. it's it's really weird. I, I I mean, that's what I love about it, though. I just feel like the balls to make music where it's just weird, but it's not like I mean. There's people that put out weird shit and you're like, yeah, you're just trying to be weird. But this feels really organic. It really feels like... We're really, we're really, really weird. weird. Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you guys all live together? There's less balls. No. Uh, me and Gaz balls. live together. You guys There's only live- two balls in this band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you, you two live together. And then uh, what about day jobs or anything? You guys work or it's just straight musicians? Um, these... I was a teacher and I quit. Yeah. Um, You're a teacher. What, what? And then sometimes I still teach and do radio stuff. And stuff. What do you do, Hammer? Um, sometimes I work at uh, there's a, a like a vegan chocolate factory. Oh, that's home. cool. Yeah. So just make chocolate. Well, Taste it. Out. You can. Well, what's the name, Willy Wonka? Call me Willy. <laughs> 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 now you're the drummer. Yeah. Yeah. What uh like when you're you're playing these tunes, some of them are long and everything. Yeah. It, how how do you like keep track of where you're at? Like I, I listen to it and I'm like, I mean, you know, I played music for years, but I know it's like here's the verse, here's the chord, but you know, it gets out there, and it's also uh, heavily dynamic the way you got to play this music. Yeah. Because it's like kind of uh, like I said, it's like really thematic you got to bring it up down i think like when we first started as a band i used to have like a long list of of notes and it would be like you know verse times 18 yeah whatever you know like yeah you know even though it wasn't a verse but for me and in my brain like that kind of it signified what i was playing was similar or the same as the verse you can kind of fuck around with that but we've been playing together for like you know nearly what two years or something now so 
you can do whatever you want and as long as you sort of, you know, fit, you know, whatever sort of the certain beat into what they're playing, like, you know, you can sort of see if someone's going to build up, so you build up and it's not so much. I think it's easier to play, well, for me anyway, to play this stuff like this rather than like a just fall to the floor fucking... Well, yeah, you can make mistakes first. and no one would know, right? That's it. Like, yeah. Because it's all kind of improv. Yeah. You know, there, there are the certain bits that you need to hit, like pauses or, you know, um, a fucking cymbal crash or something here. But everything else is kind of fair game. So it's easier than, yeah, like playing like a, a slow band. song. Yeah. Well, you know, if, if I fucked up or something, in, yeah. you know, my other band, everyone would know because it's just constant, heavy, fast shit. So, yeah, I don't know. It seems it, it's funny to think about like i mean i love sid barrett's solo records and yeah. stuff and, and and yeah and when you think about like um i think america as weird as they think they get is like uh kid a you know radiohead like that's yeah like, yeah. yeah man it's like kid a man it's really out there in art and it's like yeah, I mean, it's it's cool and stuff, but it's not like way out. It, I mean, you know where, where it's coming from. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, you got a Pink Floyd show. There was that thing, was it fucking classic albums or some shit? There was that TV show and it showed the San Fran scene, you yeah. know, with, with the dead and all that kind of weird stuff and, and Jefferson Airplane. And, and so this was happening in San Francisco. The shit was getting kind of weird. And then it goes, but over in London. And then it's like Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett era and it's just, it's evil. Oh, yeah. It is twice as weird, and it's fucking evil. It's the sound of someone going mad. You know? It's it's really fucking out there, man. I think that it, it has to do also with maybe the type of acid they were getting <laughs> compared to the San Francisco acid. Yeah. Like It almost feels like the strychnine acid. I mean, whatever it is that cooked his brain and, yeah, and that poison, music. Yeah. yeah. But, well, that guy, um, you know, Owsley, yeah. the Grateful Dead sound guy. He died in, in, in Queensland yep. about four years ago in Australia because he was living there. He, um, he moved there. I don't know. He'd been there for like 20 years. He died in a car accident on the Princess Highway. Oh, shit, really? But yeah, and he was the guy who he invented, he made acid in tabs and he would sell them from the mixing desk at the Fillmore and places like that. So you could go to a Grateful Dead gig and score acid. Hey. Yeah, if anyone needs any acid, just go up to uh, Adam. He's mixing us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is there a big psychedelic scene in Australia? Yeah, because mushies grow. They grow, especially down south. Is it legal there? Uh, no. No. But they're just there. They're, they're even growing in parks in the inner city, so people go crazy. Yeah. Are you, a, uh, are you into the dead at all? Yeah, I'm more of a Pink Floyd guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. more... Yeah, I, I like the dead. I like some of that stuff. I, I, I kind of, I just prefer the meaner, weirder shit. So you know, Piper at the Gates of Dawn and, and the, you know, Umaguma and all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, like set the controls and. Yeah, because yeah. it's evil. I like that, and I yeah. like you know, I stats and the Neue Bauten and and suicide. You know, stuff that stuff that's heavier. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, it's definitely, and it's funny because there's bands out there. Somebody yeah. turned me onto a band. God, I forget that's the pre people that they say there's no good music it's insane how much music's out there i forget all these bands names and stuff there's so much coming at me with the internet but somebody turned me on to a psychedelic band from like sweden or something like that from the 70s i was listening to it like this is fucking crazy now i've already kind of forgot what it is i'll have to dig through my itunes but yeah. imagine the bands that were influenced are they, by are they called harvester or something I They're like a commune. I can't remember. I'll look yeah. it up when we're done. Yeah. But to, to think about the bands that they were influencing that we never even heard of, yeah. you know, out there, like, like I said, where people hand you a record, somebody hand me this record, and it's like, whoa, this is fucking weird. You know? Yeah, you only see the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's really cool electro music from Japan in the, in the, in the 70s, you know, like this shit like craft work and yeah, of course that's obviously the, the bit of the iceberg you can see but then below that is just stuff that's outrageously good and no one's ever heard of it but you know spotify or whatever you know it's crap for royalties but then for just you know uncovering and unearthing just crazy obscure shit is really good yeah I, maybe they'll eventually get the balance and then we'll be in this good world of like proper royalties uh, and and endless amounts of music. I just recently sold my record collection, and people are like, "What?" Yeah, right. 
and it's uh, i was just like well i'm i'm traveling all the time and i i'm at this age in my life now where i just like to have everything because i feel with the records you constantly go to the same 25 records and you don't take any chances yeah. mm -hmm. but then with with streaming it becomes ADD. You're constantly like this, 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 and you don't. I don't. So I don't know the balance of it, but I do love the. I, I couldn't own every record from the last five years of bands that I loved. It would be ridiculous. Like look at all these new bands I love, and you have all their records, but I have them in my hand and constantly can play them for people instantly. Like when I play people your band, I'm like, you got to check this band out. It's one of those bands where you have to listen to it. If you say, I'll check it out later, they never do or whatever, you know? So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a weird world. Now, do you make any money from streaming? Uh, you yeah. Get, you get your, uh, in Australia, they have a performing rights association or whatever, and they, every year, every quarter, they send you it's like funny bit of paper and it's it shows you your spotify royalties and it's just like zero 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 point i mean on my other band anyway it's really funny i was like who the fuck is putting this together it's such a waste of time yeah yeah right. <laughs> yeah um, here's a, here's a piece of paper letting you know zero money <laughs> what the fuck you could just make that call <laughs> zero hang up you know you or an e nothing. yeah hey it's, it looks like zero again <laughs> We can laugh about that, but it makes me angry because uh, a band like you guys, look, there's tons of bands every day that try to learn instruments and hope to become superstars, famous and rich and all that shit. But then there's people like you guys that make these incredible records and you just know that you're making it because you love to do it. There's not going to be any kind of... Uh, uh, maybe you could get to a mid-level glory, which is a great... But it's weird. I mean, I'm sure it's the same everywhere, but I was talking to someone about how in Australia there's lots of bands that for some reason there's some kind of relationship between nev realizing from the beginning that you're not going to be economically successful or sustainable. So then it's just like you can flip the bird from day one and do whatever the hell you want. And then um, there's amazing, amazing Australian underground bands that you're just mind-blowing that only ever made one album. And it's something about the fact, maybe, that they never thought they would be successful. Well, I in think a, it's in a monetary way. It's good in, a, in a one it's way. It's shit and it's good. It's like, good in one way where it weeds out the fucking uh, the part-timers. Yeah. You know, like, they'll be like, oh, I'm not getting into that. <laughs> It'd be like, you know, you just tell them right away, like, there's going to be no money. And they go, oh, cool. And they leave. And then the people that stay, you go, okay, we got something here. Let's yeah. make something, you know? Now, what are the dates? Let's go through the dates. You're in L.A. tonight. Which this won't be out for two weeks, so. Uh, yeah, you go into our Insta. What's what? that? Instagram. Uh, oh, Instagram. Killer. Um, tropical underscore fuck underscore storm. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's... Um, but where are we going? We're going to Austin, oh, Atlanta, Austin, Dallas, St. Louis, Chicago, Cleveland, Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Brooklyn. That's all starting on the, about the 10th. That's where we are from about the 10th of September. That's awesome. Yeah. You guys got some great cities. Mm, yeah, be now, great. who booked the tour? Did you guys book it or you got a booking agent? Uh, we got a booking agent, Joe Price, from Ground Control. Oh, that's great, man. Yeah. I'm looking at some of your photos here. This is, this is cool. <laughs> you know? uh, now, what do we got for instrument-wise? Do you guys care what you play, uh, guitars and stuff-wise? Do you give a shit about gear or are you just like, eh? Uh, yeah, it's a means to an end. I mean, yeah. We're not fanatics. Or, yeah. you know, we're not fetishizing equipment. I don't know, just guitars. But what about the Fenders, everything's Fender. What about the amps, though, since you did it through these ghetto blasters? What do you use live? Oh, use live Roland, Roland and Fender. Oh, like, yeah. Like, we've got pedals set up that kind of ensures that wherever we go or whatever playthrough, you can make something cool happen. Yeah, I think pedals are the, the key to psychedelic music, 100%. Yeah, we got some just weird stuff. You guys into yeah. Earthquaker? Uh, yeah, I had a rainbow thing, a rainbow machine for a while. Yeah, I sort of swap a lot. Well, I've got like this big thing called Mr. Ugly, or it's like Senor Feo, which is the Spanish. It was named in Spain. Uh, does it, what kind of effect is it? Like delays? It's, it's, like, a, it's like a self-oscillating synthesizer 
uh, fuzz. It's really weird. And it was made in the noughties before all that boutique pedal shit got kind of big. Oh, wow. By a company. They're now called 4MS, but they used to be called 3MS. Now they only make Eurorack stuff, but they made fuzz pedals to begin with. And it's, it's huge. It's bizarre. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. You just step on it and see what happens. But yeah, some, someone in, a, in Basque country in Spain said, oh, just a very ugly sounding pedal. <laughs> and <laughs> named, named it Senor Feo. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, yeah, uh, Irish, yeah. Spanish. Yeah. Uh, that's, your, that's your Spanish accent. Yeah. I'm not very good. Yeah. I'm famously bad. Showed at up accent. with your matador on. Oh, that's a very ugly the pedal. Gaz does one accent and it's all Jamaican sl- slash Irish for yeah. everything. <laughs> Every accent sounds like that. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I, I can hardly speak English. So oh, yeah. that's yeah. a very ugly pedal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a band. Like yeah. accents. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tonight. I, I cannot wait. And uh, Thanks for chatting with us. Yeah. Oh, man, I was so glad you guys did it. I, I don't know how I reached out somehow. Um, oh, I think I got an email from some publicist, and I was like, please got to get them on. Oh, well, maybe they get in there. I was like, no, nah, fucking tell them. <laughs> you know, we got to get on this goddamn show. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for coming by. Let's uh, let's promote the new record. It's out right now, and it's uh, it's on iTunes. And of course, you got vinyl. Yep. Yeah, hell yeah. Oh, that badass brain drops. And what about merch? You got some shirts and shit. We got shirts, vinyl. We got a, yeah, a bunch yeah. of stuff. Everything really. Yeah, I, I gotta get a shirt going. All right, thanks for tuning in, everybody, to another episode of Let There Be Talk. Thank you so much, Tropical Fuckstorm, for coming by. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys. Get out there and watch these guys. Get their records. I think you're going to enjoy it. And uh, find the dick pics on their uh, their covers. And uh, I love love that story. And uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. See ya.